Welcome to the Luna Award Series Tour. I am Bianca Sandoval, and I serve as your chairwoman of the Regional Hispanic Contractors Association. It is such a pleasure to welcome you to the Austin Tour. We know our capital city serves so many and are beyond grateful to have today's speakers join us and share their incredible experience for this tour. We would like to thank our corporate partner, Ferrovial Weber, and encourage you to engage with them on all social platforms. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Veronica Torres with Healthy Latina Lifestyle, and I'm here to introduce a moment of self-care for today before we get started with our series. I wanna first off thank the Luna Awards Digital Series Tour for inviting self-care into this panel discussion today. I know that women in construction, engineering, and architectural design hardly have a moment for themselves because you're busy taking over the world. And today I wanna teach you a little breathing exercise or a little self-care relief that can get you through your day. Self-care can be taught um, through a seated position. It could be something that you practice on your own. Wherever you're at right now in this moment, we're gonna take a little moment to learn a breathing exercise and perhaps a little stretching for you to enjoy before the show. So if you're in a chair right now or on a couch, I want you to be mindful of where your feet are, uncrossing your legs and allowing your feet to be grounded to the ground, perhaps even sitting nice and long in your chair. I want you to roll your shoulders back. I want you to roll your neck around a few times, clockwise, counterclockwise, and just begin by telling your body that you're ready to tune into itself. For this break, it does not require anything, just your breath and a silent room. So if you have your phone on or perhaps music or any other distractions, go ahead and take this moment to silent and turn it off. We want to be so plugged into what's about to take place and I don't want you to feel cheated out of a good, relaxing breath and moment for yourself. So once you've done that, we're gonna get back to our posture and our seat getting nice and long through our spine, perhaps even tilting our chin where we elongate our neck. And I want you to bring your hands to your lap, either cup like this or hands on your knees facing up or facing down, whatever you prefer. And begin by bringing awareness to your breath. That's breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Once again, rolling your shoulders back getting nice and seated and comfortable. You can even close your eyes at this moment or bring a soft gaze right in front of you, whatever's most comfortable for you. And continue breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, relaxing. We are just telling our bodies that it's time for us to take a moment for ourselves. Close your eyes, breathing in and out. And for the next few moments, I'm gonna walk you through a breathing exercise that's called the mother's breath. This is a nice soothing breath that is practiced whenever you start to begin to feel any sort of anxiety, anger, fear, or just when you need a moment for yourself. The mother's breath is the most soothing breath that you can do that invites that calm feeling of a motherly love and it's easy to do. So we'll get started. Inhaling in through the nose and holding your breath for a count of five at the top. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhaling, holding for a count of five at the bottom. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling in, eyes closed. Holding the breath for five, four, three, two, one, exhaling, holding for five, four, three, two, one. Now practice on your own, inhaling in, holding your breath, exhaling. Now returning back to your natural breath, eyes closed, still sitting here, now let us remind ourselves of that feeling of inhalation and exhalation and the comfort of knowing that our breath is natural and here for us in this very moment. Our 
our breath is a reminder that we no longer have to worry, we no longer have to stress, it will do the work for us. Let us sit and bring awareness to our body, perhaps noticing if there's any areas in your body that you're carrying stress, sending some love through your breath to that area. Most of the times it's in our shoulders, in our neck, where we're on our computers throughout the day, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, allowing relief to come through your breath to that area that you feel needs a little more space and a little more love. Now slowly, let's begin to scan the rest of our body and our mind coming to our legs, breathing in some love and gratitude through your breath to your legs, feeling grateful that we have our legs that keep us up, standing firm, bringing awareness to your knees and your thighs, traveling up to your hips, abdomen area that carries all of our organs and our digestive system that works for us every day. Breathing in, bringing awareness to your chest and your heart. Now I want you to bring your hands to your heart and making sure that we feel that beat. Perhaps feeling a little gratitude right here. Taking in your breath, inhale in. Exhale out, feeling the thumping in your chest. A little more love to your heart. Bringing your hands back to your knees. Bringing your awareness to your shoulders for holding your head and your body. Now bringing awareness to your mind, to your forehead for thinking today. Coming back to your breath, keeping your eyes closed, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. I know that it's hard for us to take a moment to not think of things that happened in our past or yesterday, or perhaps even thinking of the things that are to come. Practicing self-care comes from being in the now and being fully aware of what is happening in this very moment, and that is our breath. That is our gratitude for gathering in community. That is setting intentions for ourself, for the love, for the gratitude, for the joy that comes when we take a moment in breath and in self. Now, bringing your hands back to your heart, keeping your eyes closed, I want you to repeat after me. I am safe. I am love. I am peace. And I want you to think about your family, your friends, and your community. think of them and say, you are loved, you are peace, you are safe. And let's slowly begin to think of everyone that is gathered today in community for the Luna Awards and let's wish them love, wish them peace, and wish them safety. bringing your hands back to your knees, wiggling your fingers and toes and opening your eyes, taking one last deep breath in together and exhaling. Thank you for joining us and taking this moment of self-care. I hope you enjoy the rest of the series. Namaste. Hi everyone, good morning. Buenos dias, my name is Vanessa Fuentes and I am the incoming city councilwoman for District 2 here in Austin, Texas. 
very excited to represent my community and to serve my community on Austin City Council. You know, when I ran uh, this campaign, I was the only Latina in all of Austin running for City Council. And in a community where Latinos make up nearly 40% of our population, I know firsthand how important it is to have representation, how much representation matters, and that's why I'm very excited to be here today with the Luna Awards, celebrating our women in the construction industry who are making a difference in the construction industry, especially knowing, uh, knowing how critical it is to have diverse perspectives at the table and leading the fight. We also know that this pandemic is affecting our frontline workers the most. And so as we celebrate and recognize the accomplishments and contributions of women in the construction industry, I think it's also important to acknowledge the risk and the risk level and the exposure that our, our workers in the construction industry face. And there's more work to be done. And you can count on me as a champion and as an ally, as a leader who will be helping navigate the pandemic helping my community withstand this pandemic and of course the economic downturn. And so much more to come, but also just wanted to welcome everyone, to congratulate everyone on their contributions and to, and to wish you well on today's conversation. We need to be having more conversations on what it's like navigating a different career paths, what it's like as a woman navigating corporate structures and industries where we're not uh, getting our fair share of representation. Uh, and to also build that pipeline to ensure that we're doing all that we can for the next generation to make it easier for them to have that equitable access to opportunity. Again, my name is Vanessa Fuentes. Please catch me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter at Vanessa for ATX if you wanna follow along my journey uh, on Instagram, I'm doing a behind the scenes look of what it's like um, as a first time candidate who's about to transition to public office. So, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Luna Austin series. We're doing a topic today on uh, women making a difference with connecting construction communities. My name is Taryn Ritchie. I am the pre construction manager with Ryan Companies. I am a 20 year industry veteran. We are a general contractor, developer, real estate management firm. Um, I am also our regional designee, uh, inclusion designee to help facilitate uh, diversity and inclusion on our projects, um, helping develop relationships with um, small and minority businesses. Um, today we have a great panel for you. Um, I'm going to start with um, Martha Gonzalez with Gensler. She's going to introduce herself and we'll keep rolling. Hello everyone. I'm Martha Gonzalez. I'm a project architect at Gensler and uh, currently I'm working on the Travis County Courthouse, which is an incredibly complex uh, but incredibly fun project. I've been an architect for, a licensed architect for about six years and in the architecture industry for over 10 years. I knew I wanted to be an architect since I was a young girl, I think around 12 years old. I went to my friend's house, her older sister was studying to be an architect and her room was full of drawings and models and I always loved art and I thought if I can draw and paint and make little models all day, I'd be happy. Um, little did I know that it's much more <laughs> complicated than that, but, uh, you know, at the, at the true essence, it's a science and an art, and I'm incredibly lucky that I'm challenged every single day to do what I love to do, and I'm incredibly excited to be part of this panel, to be surrounded by these women who are pillars in their community and in their industry. I'm honored to be part of this and to promote women in construction, specifically Hispanic women, which, you know, we work very, very hard and we want representation and we want recognition. And I can't wait to get started in this conversation. Thank you, Martha. I think we're going to uh, go over to Lissy Riddell. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me today. Um, I'm so excited about this panel. Um, it's, it's always a good opportunity when uh, Latinas in construction get together. Uh, we don't get to see that in, in our hometowns and uh, being in the United States and, and being able to advocate for that in this level, it's, it's an honor. So thank you for that. 
Um, my name is Lindsay Rydell. Um, I'm originally from Barranquilla, Colombia, a proud Latina and a proud American citizen. I've been in the state for over 20 years. Um, I'm, I've been in construction for over 16 years. And currently, I'm the vice president of MOCA System, a program management company. Uh, we do program management services, which is uh, we don't do at risk construction, but we do uh, owner representation and professional services. Um, I started my career in the at risk construction uh, on the site. It was a very exciting time. Um, and then moved my way up from superintendent to uh, project engineer and on the at risk construction and then decided to go into uh, the owner's representation. And I've been doing that uh, since then, since 2003. Um, I go through every single market sector. You know, my experience is on state, federal, local um, and private, um, you know, sectors uh, providing program management and business development services. So um, I have two children. I have a four-year-old um, and I have an eight-year-old girl. Uh, the four-year-old is a boy and I have my husband. I'm happily married um, and been in Texas since 2007, I believe. So I consider myself an Austinite and my kids are from Texas, husband's from Texas. So I'm from Texas too. <laughs> and, and I'm just happy to be here. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Awesome. Thank you so much. So next we have Maribel Guerrero. Good morning, ladies. Um, I want to start off by saying I'm so excited about being here. I mean, I didn't even know something like this existed. So to be able to be a part of this is, is I'm so excited, humbled, and I can't wait to just learn more about y'all, you know, and, and your journey and, and how I can help as well. So a little bit about me. Um, I was, I'm an original Austinite, born and raised in Southeast Austin. And my parents my, immigrated from Mexico in the 70s. And so I grew up, mom, a caregiver, dad in construction. And I'm a single mother to a 10 year old boy. He's in fifth grade. And for the past 15 years, I've also been a full-time caregiver to two individuals with special needs. And so people always ask me, you know, how did I get started in construction? Because I'm a woman. I get that all the time. Like, Ooh, you're in construction, but you're a woman. And so, you know, to kind of give you how I started, it's, it's you know, it's been a journey. I'm grateful for it. And my, like I said before, I've been a caregiver for 15 years, and that's been my first passion. I grew up seeing my mom, you know, caring for people in need. And so I wanted to open up group homes for people with special needs. Um, after, you know, doing my research, talking to other contractors, I realized, whoa, it's going to be expensive to contract a company to remodel these homes. So I decided I'm going to do it myself. And that's how world-class construction was started. And I've, I started preparing. I hired a business coach and that was in 2017. And we did all the homework. We just, you know, really prepared. And I launched in April of 2018. And from the get go, I've been in the field. I've been out there working in Austin heat with the guys. I'm hands on. Um, I've been, you know, working the 70 hour weeks and, you know, I'm, basically involved in all the daily operations of my company. And I'm proud to say that I'm a Latina, I'm a mother, you know, and I, I'm excited to be here because I, if my story can inspire other Latinas to join the construction community, then I know I did my job. Awesome, thank you so much. So um, I was introduced to the Lunar Awards uh, last year when I was asked to be an ambassador for the Austin series, um, their new rollout for uh, moving it to different cities throughout the state of Texas. Um, with that, I, I, I was lucky enough to, to be nominated as a business advocate and asked again to join this year as an ambassador and to be a moderator for the Austin uh, panel. Um, I wanted to ask why um, you decided to be involved in the Luna Awards. Why I decided to be a part of the Luna Awards. Well, again, you know, being in this 
dominated industry. You don't see somebody like me. You know, you don't. And, you know, we're having real conversations here. And so, you know, for me to be a part of something so special because you don't see this every day. And it's a very male dominated industry. And so to be asked to be a part of this is like, for me, it's, it's exciting to know that there are other women that look like me in this field. And it's empowering as well to continue my journey because it can be discouraging. Mm -hmm. We face a lot of different challenges out in the field. Um, we get pulled in different directions. And so to be a part of the Luna, you know, you know, event, it, it, it's something that I'm excited about because I can collaborate with other women. I can see what they're doing and it just gets the momentum going of, of what, you know, it's like possibilities are limitless, you know? So I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Same here. Um, I was fortunate last year, I was uh, nominated as one business advocate of the year and also uh, under the executive of the year category. And that was the first time I've heard of Luna Awards. And um, it was, the nomination of course was exciting, but going to the event where we could attend people last year and seeing, you know, the, the energy of women in construction that as, you know, as Maribel, as you said, I mean, you don't, you don't see it. You just don't see it. I mean, we don't talk about it. We don't, you know, empower all women to do it. We just, we just do it. Um, so in, in, and I started in the natural construction and on professional services. I mean, I don't know if it's more male dominated than at construction, but it's definitely something that you don't talk about. And um, it's, it's something that needs more exposure and it, you know, younger generations need to know that you can do it, that you can start from scratch and, and be a, a vice president, a president, that it, it does happen and that you are in a country where it's, it, you know, they support that. I mean, they really will, you are really selected based on your qualification, although we still consider minority, they're still basing you off a qualification. So, you know, uh, being part and, and having MOCA being part also of an organization, especially in this um, critical political times, I think is important to, to have these conversations and, and, and have these exposures for other staff to, to look up and see, well, you know, we can do this and we're recognized. And not only are we recognized, but we're supported by the community and by the male community as well. So I think it's something that, um, that you know, caught my eye, uh, um, Tarin. You know, it was, you know, I, last year I saw a lot of colleagues. I used to uh, work for the state of Texas and their Texas Facilities Commission. And there was a lot of colleagues that I saw over there and a lot of male colleagues from other industries that were supporting that and were supporting our, you know, our leadership. Because, you know, one thing that I've heard from um, very good politician is never ask permission to leave. Never ask permission to leave. Just do it. And uh, it's, it's, it's an anatomist of, of this award. You know, everybody that's, that's been nominated is a leader in their own field. And I think that's something that um, we just don't talk about because we're just not used to seeing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need each other and we need to support each other. And um, as you can tell in this political times, it, it works, it works. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the short version of it, Taryn. Awesome, Martha? Thank you, Lizzie. Um, I actually had not heard of the Luna Awards until this year, which I feel that uh, part of the reason I want to be here and the reason I want to talk about this more is to get exposure, to make sure uh, that everyone in our industry knows that there's an opportunity for this, that there's an opportunity for networking and for conversation already in the last 10 minutes getting to know each other. I feel so lucky to, to have a dialogue with you and to hear your stories. I'm so amazed uh, at what you guys do, Lizzie and Maribel, and, and just this, this uh, 
you know, need to, to create when there isn't something there for you. Like the story of, well, it was going to be too expensive to design this home or this facility for people with special needs. So I had to do it myself. That can do attitude that us Latinas have of, you know, we're not going to wait to lead. We're not going to ask permission. We're going to do it ourselves. So I'm just lucky to get to know you guys and to get the word out, to get people excited about it. And hopefully next year I can attend in person if we can actually be in person. <laughs> so I, I love the, the solidarity. Sometimes architects and contractors have a, an antagonistic relationship, but I know that um, women are able to sort of bridge this communication divide sometimes because I think we 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 have a different approach. I'm in full swing in a, a full swing construction administration phase, and I see it. I see um, I do work with wonderful women, and and I'm really excited that that there's a lot of women in the construction field um, currently in the project that I'm on, and I see that they have patience and trust and, and and a collaborative perspective so do the men but women just there's a different sensibility <laughs> so i i am so happy that there's more and more um women deciding to be part of this field and i think the more that we have events like this and and people that look like us i think it encourages a younger generation um to think that it's a possibility for them and so that I am so happy to be to be part of the Luna Awards and, and this event. And I hope that I continue to to be part of a movement that's going to gain momentum and be bigger than us and, and us right now. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll get the exposure that it truly deserves. Great. Thank you, Martha. So next, um, when did you first learn about collaboration with other women in your industry? I was lucky enough to have um, a great role model. My mom's been in the industry for 40 years, so she set the bar high. But what, what are some of y'all's experiences with collaboration with other women in the industry? I did, I did um, a couple of years ago, there was an exhibit for women in architecture that we brought from Houston. So it was a, it was a, an exhibit that was not meant to travel. It was a fixed exhibit, but one of um, our president at the time, the, the president of the AIA, she thought it was really important for us to bring it to Austin from Houston. So it was a huge elaborate ordeal where we had a lot of partners in the construction industry help us uh, with the logistics of not only getting it here but the assembly of it we got a place downtown that we had to do everything from the ground up it was not set up so a lot of women from it was the first time that it, it truly felt like this uh, no ego, everybody left their titles at the door and got dirty and, you know, was painting, was, um, you know, so much work went into it, weeks of work, of manual labor and collaboration and how to sort of make it work in a space with a, like I mentioned, it was not an exhibit that was meant to travel and it was also an exhibit that was meant to be in a much bigger room and <laughs> making it all work was uh, a very intense collaborative experience, but it turned out to be an incredible event. So I met a lot of women in different firms, architecture firms, and a lot of women in different construction firms. And I think just uh, getting together for this higher purpose for, for, it was, so the exhibit itself was a timeline um, of women in architecture, women that had made a, a difference. and. Um, again, because it is a male dominated industry, you don't hear about these pioneer, pioneering women as much. So making a big statement about the importance of their contributions was, was significant and it brought many of us together. So I'm very proud of that moment and met a lot of friends or created friendships and, and expanded my network. So that's one Great. example. <laughs> Great, awesome, no, thank you. Um, Lissy, do you have, do you have anything? Yes. Um, so somehow for the past, I would say 
past six or seven years, all of my, my, my mentors and my colleagues have been women. That Great. was not something that I purposely chose, but um, it, it just happened. I mean, the greatest mentors that I had and um, my, my bosses have been women, women in the industry. So it's been very refreshing to, to learn from them, to learn from their perspective and to um, you know, learn and hone in to um, the attitude, the character. Right, you know, sometimes we are perceived. If, we're, if we are too, if we're too tough, then uh, we're not assertive. We're not assertive. We're tough. So you know, kind of learn those nuances from from them, and how to to really lead, you know, and 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 put yourself in a in a leading position where you're respected. Um, you know, and and they also taught me to, you know, address the elephant in the room. And that is, um, it's a tough career. I mean, we are a minority and it's okay. I mean, it, it is okay. So we have to stop looking ourselves as a minority. We, stop, we have to stop talking about us as a minority. Just talk about it because what shines is our qualification and what we bring to the table. So once you concentrate on that and highlight that, um, everything else is you know, goes in the back burner. So, you know, it's this, yes, I want to empower women, but don't, don't talk about us being the minority. It is something that is something that we have to, you know, live with and, and nationally is getting better, you know, worldwide is getting better, but until we get to the level that you know, we know we deserve, you know, you present yourself um, as, as a woman, as an individual, that, you know, focus on our qualifications, because everything else is noise. Everything else is noise. So, you know, I, I mean, I've had the best mentors. I had the best mentors. I, um, you know, I still today, you know, my, my current boss is, is a woman too. And um, it's, it's, I can see the same attitude in, in, in all of them. And I am very appreciative of that opportunity because I didn't chose that. It just kind of happened. And um, it's always good to see things from their perspective. So uh, I think that was, you know, intense collaboration. And, you know, and, and as we're talking about the elephant in the room, you know, one thing that I've learned from them um, and I think is something that's worth a conversation um, is, you know, women were very competitive too to each other. We are. You know, there's a lot of, I don't know, is it jealousy or um, I don't know what it is, but it's just, and I don't think it's something that women want to do. It's just, we, it's always been so hard for women to, for us to do anything, you know, in comparison to, to the male, um, um, uh, you know, the male side, that it's just a competitive side. So when there's another woman that's next to us, it's not that we want to be, lack of better words, mean and competitive. It's that we're so protective of what we've, we've grown. So I think it's something that we need, I, I think we need to work on. I think our, our biggest enemies are ourselves in the industry sometimes. I can see I've had, you know, more relaxed conversation with, with our male counterparts than with women. And I think is, you know, and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I would say uh, liable for that too. You know, we, we, it's hard to have these conversations. I don't know is because, again, you know, we try so hard to build where we're at and, 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 and we don't want, you know, we want to be protective about it, but it, it does happen. I don't know if it happens to any of you, but it does happen that you see more rivalry between, you know, women itself that between men and women. You know, and, and I think it's time to talk about it. I think it's time to really support each other, you know, because you're going to shine again because of, of what you bring to the table, not because of, you know, you know, whether you're a woman or you're a man. So, um, yes, you know, I've had this conversation, Tara, with my mentor about it, about, I mean, I actually wanted to do a, even a series of, you know, addressing the elephant in the room because we don't talk about this. And I think it's very important to talk about it 
because this is a moment that we really need each other and have the conversations, right? Um, so yeah, Tyron, that's kind of a little bit of... That's all right. Uh, when did you first learn about collaboration of, with women in your industry? Well, thank you for that question because it's a very important question, especially coming from, you know, how I started from scratch, building my company. Um, I really didn't know about collaboration with women in the industry. I didn't have a mentor when starting my construction company. Um, my dad, yes, he was in construction, but he didn't have his own business. And um, unfortunately he's in heaven now. Um, so it kind of was when I decided to go for it, I had to learn on my own. So I'm so, that's what's so exciting about that question is that now that I know that there's collaboration through the Luna Awards, now I'm like, wow, where can I go with this? How can I inspire other women to join the construction field? You know, because, you know, how Lizzie had said before, it, it's the elephant in the room. You know, we don't have a lot of women in this industry because one, they may not feel they have support or somebody that they can look up to, to kind of guide them in this industry. So, you know, having this opportunity here with the Luna Awards today is, it's exciting for me as a small Latina business owner in the construction field, because now I feel like I have support outside of my, my little world, you know? And so I'm able to reach out to, you know, I would have never known that y'all existed, you know, if it wasn't for the Luna Award. So, um, you know, that's my take on that. I mean, it's, it's a different, you know, perspective. You know, I, I, now I can say I've met these awesome ladies and they're in construction. They understand me. They understand the, the daily ins and outs of, you know, having to have patience and, and learning new things every day. And they look like me. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. So um, what drives you to tell stories of work on digital platforms? I will say my story. Um, uh, you know, I, I think it's worth telling the story. Um, I'm, I, I like to talk, as you can tell. I'm a storyteller. Um, but um, the, the more I know about the industry, the more I connect with people, the more um, I feel that, you know, the things that sometimes we feel like, um, um, there's a say, I'm sorry, there's a say that's, that goes, common sense is not very common anymore. Things that you feel like are common sense, right? Well, you know, we're doing work, we're in construction, we do this, I mean, you know, and then and you should be respected. Or you should be, you know, take it into consideration. And then I met, because of what I do in my career, a lot of people, a lot of women, and a lot of the, the younger, you know, younger generation that are, that look like me. You know, when I started construction, I mean, it's, I was very young. I was in my 20s. I wouldn't, you know, I wasn't ugly, you know. <laughs> No, it's okay. You cute. <laughs> Who that is? <laughs> yeah, but I was I was superintendent in Miami with a lot of male Cuban community, and and you know and you know and the the uh, Hispanic male community is probably harder than you know the, the white male community. So it's um uh, it was hard. It was it was hard to be respected, to have my work respected. Um, and, um, I think, uh, and I've heard other stories that are, um, uh, very sad and, and, and painful. It never happened to me, it happened to my, 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 my coworkers and, and my women in construction. And, uh, they, you know, I think about this younger generation that they, you know, we need to speak up and we really need to, to um some at some point or in in some way empower them not to be afraid of being aside and having a superintendent tell you things that they shouldn't or being discriminated or, or talked down 
or, and it still happens, it happens in the field, it happens in a board meeting, it happens publicly, it, have, it, it happens at any point. So I think we need, we need to have those conversations and, and uh, uh, you know, a platform like this, there's a um, you know, virtual platform, it's a good way to engage the young, younger generation. So they're not afraid of saying, well, you know, I'm not going to construction because I mean, there's, they're afraid of, of not being able to take it. So you have to have thick skin to take it. That's a yeah. given. You're gonna go into construction, you're gonna have a hard time. And you just have to acknowledge that, as I keep saying, acknowledge the elephant in the room, and that's what you wanted to do, and put your big girl pants and just do it. That's yeah. it. So I, I think, uh, but I didn't know the need for that conversation. Again, you know, I thought that common sense was, you know, not so common anymore. I thought that that would just come, you know, if you want to go into a field, you should know these things. So you, and some people, you know, some younger generations, they don't, and they're afraid of it. And they're excellent architects, engineers, field people. I mean, I think there's, you know, if I have to go into uh, substantial completion, there is a, a girl project manager, I know that that closeout is going to be impeccable. I know, I, I just know because we're so organized. I'm like, if there's more women in construction doing what we do, we can save end users, owners so much money <laughs> just because <laughs> how organized we are. I mean, I mean so, detail. <laughs> so I'm like, how, the level of organization. So, you know, I don't want, there's a lot. I see my daughter, I have an eight year old and, and, you know, and, and then my four year old tells me, well, you don't, you don't go into construction, just boys. I'm like, I'm like, what do you say? So I'm like, where's this coming from? But that's all he sees, you know, he sees Bob the Builder. Why cannot be a girl Bob the Builder? Why can, you know, why, I mean, so there's a lot of things that I see my four-year-old, they don't, they don't have, we don't have. And I had to show him like, yeah, mom goes in construction, mom wore a hard hat, and mom does this. Oh, so um, that's why you feel that that's it's part of my responsibility as a professional and as a mom. You know, just used to advocate for what we do, so we get the respect from from everyone. So that's, that's it. I love your story, and I love um, how vulnerable you are, and and how you want to share that, so people, uh, as you mentioned, generations will come to understand that the difficulties and, and the thick skin required to, to go up through the ranks and be in leadership positions, but that it's possible and that it'll change as more women, uh, you know, infiltrate the industry and get into these positions to, to, of influence that it's gonna change and they won't have to go through a bad experience because there's gonna be a systematic change, but that will only happen with more of us in the field. I know my issue is a little bit different, but um, whenever I started doing CA in a very complex project, I would get advice from older people that had done the, the process before. And they would always tell me, you have to be stern, you have to say no, you, you don't budge, you, you know, you, you basically say no. And for me, that was, that was not the right answer. I had to ask why versus no, because you have to open communication to find common ground. And I'm not a person, I feel like I'm assertive and I'm confident, but I'm not, uh, it's not in my personality to be, aggressive in a way that maybe some women feel that they need to be when they're out on the construction site. That was the advice I got. You have to be aggressive. You have to stand your ground. You have to say no. And I felt like I could navigate a different approach where they could trust me because I listened to them and I understood everybody's just getting orders from above, right? Like you have to see that bigger picture. Where is the, the reason why maybe there's a uh, you know, something like a, an original detail is being changed. It's, it's not because they just want to change it. Th there's a higher level of issues that, that everybody has to be open 
to understanding and then figuring out the best solution. But when, when again, um, you want to be defensive, that's never, that's never going to work. And so um, I've been able to, over the last two years, navigate this construction administration process without having to be, you know, more of a, a bad guy, right? <laughs> Not a bad guy, but it just, it just isn't who I am and I can't change who I am. And going back to mentorship, I think for me, my mentors have been men and I've always been, because there's very few women in leadership. And that's the competitiveness where you talk about the elephant in the room. And because there's less of you, you're more protective of your title of who climbs to the top. And I was very intimidated and I was afraid to ask questions and being vulnerable and understanding that you don't know everything and you don't have all the answers with younger with younger people um now as i you know get older and i've been in the field for longer i always want to seem approachable like i met you guys and instantly i'm like they are so warm and approachable and i can be i can ask a stupid question maybe and they're not going to judge me and i think that's so important to to um just always be humbled always be approachable always keep learning and allow people uh, to, to infiltrate that, that bubble, right? And um, so for me, that's a, a huge thing. I'm silly. I say dumb things all the time. So I just, I, I, I want to remain that way, I guess, so that people don't, don't think, oh no, don't bother Martha or don't, like, you can always bother me. You can always ask me stupid questions. And um, hopefully there, I can give you a good answer, but I think that for me, that has been important as I, you know, try to mentor younger, younger people. Hello, my name is Angela Berry Robertson, and I'm the Director of Diversity Contract Compliance for Ferrovia Construction and Weber. We are proud to be this year's presenting sponsor for the Luna Awards Speaker Series. As a past recipient of a Luna Awards, we want to congratulate all the nominees. We, again, Ferroviel and Weber, are proud to celebrate the achievements of women in construction along with the Regional Hispanic Contractors Association. Can you share a story of when you experienced a network expansion and all the good and bad, if any, that came with that? I have. So after I, um, after I became a licensed architect, it's a very long process. There's a lot of studying that you have to do. Um, so I felt like it was a very selfish time in my life. So after I became licensed, I wanted to give back. And that was like, my goal was to get involved. And I became involved as a tutor for the ACE Mentorship Program of Austin. So one incredible thing about ACE is that it's architecture, construction, and engineering. And architects can be very insular. I married an architect. All my friends are architects. I have a very, a very bubble, uh, you know, small insular group. And so this was an incredible opportunity to meet people in construction and engineering. And it's uh, that expanded my network exponentially. And I didn't even go into it thinking that that was an outcome, a possible outcome. I went into it because I wanted to mentor young people people that are in high school trying to decide what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. And out of that, so many friendships were formed. And currently in my project, I think like I'm working with a lot of consultants and, and a lot of engineers and contractors. And I already knew all of them because of ACE. Like I already knew our structural engineer. Um, I already knew like a lot of the contractors. And so it was it's so nice that you walk into a project and there's al already someone you trust in a very familiar face. And I think it's made collaborating and working together easier so that I don't think I have a bad network story, but that's a great network story. So if anybody also wants to participate in ACE, it's, it's a great way to, to get involved and, and make a difference. Well, I oh, have... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I'll echo ACE is a great program and it's also mentoring a future generation of um, an industry that 
very, very desperately needs uh, younger generations to get involved in. So uh, applaud you for that. Yeah. Well, I have a looking into my the network. I have a bad story, and it's it's uh, strictly uh, strictly related to to the fact of me being a woman. Uh, uh, because of what I do on the business development, and I mean this of the network is something that I have to do every day. I mean, I think that's something that we have to do, even in our own, in our own projects, is always looking for that next project or that opportunity and be humble enough to know that there's always something that you don't know and that you can always, you know, expand your network to get to know more about people, about companies, about the industry. I mean, being up to date in, in what we do, I think is essential. So we, I had to go to one event one day and uh, I had to meet the president of a company, uh, which I can't, you know, disclose names, of course. And uh, we were in line and I was the only woman that was in line to do that. And we waited for a long time. I waited for a long time. And he just greeted everyone and he knew I was standing right next to him, right next to him. Um, and I was probably waiting for 20 minutes. And because I was not a man, he would not, he would just address me, he will talk to my assistant. And I'm like, why? I'm talking to you. So, you know, um, it was, uh, it, it, that one hurt. That one really shook the floor for me because, you know, and I, I didn't, I didn't, when he said, Let's talk to your, let, let me talk to your assistant. I didn't say that to him directly. That's what I wanted to say. Why I'm talking, you're just talking to me right now. Um, so that's something that I will, I regret. I mean, I wish I could go back and just talk and say, well, I'm talking to you, you know, but I felt for the very first time in a long time, completely out of place just because I wasn't a man. Mm -hmm. And uh, that day I said, that's going to change. That's going to change. I had to change that myself and address that in front of that person. And, um, but I was tired. You know, I was tired of why does it have to be hard? Because we do get tired. I mean, why do we have to have to act more just because of the fact that we're women? Why? So I've been in like three conferences that week. I was tired. I didn't have the energy to address that. And which probably could be a client. I was tired of that. So I didn't want to do it that day. Um, but I think that's something that uh, it hurt. And it, I shook it off. I shook it off in, in two hours. Um, but it reminded me that there's still that gap. You know, there's still that problem, right? And um, and it's not because I'm a Latina, it's, it's because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. So that just fueled me to work harder on that. It just fuels me every time I have that setback. It just really fuels me to, to change that. And, um, and it, it made me mad that it hurt me because it shouldn't have hurt me. But um, it made me realize and that there's still a problem and that I need to help address the problem. I thought it wasn't a problem anymore because I had so much success with, with my, my male counterparts connecting and all of that, but it still is. So uh, that was a negative one. And again, I encourage all of my, my colleagues to, every time you have something like that, make that your priority to change it. And, and remind yourself that that's have to fuel you to just work harder on what you do and keep up what you do to change that because, because it's a need. So yeah, that's, that's my negative experience there. Well, thank you for that. Um, so what inspires you to connect with women in your workplace or women in general? Maribel? What inspires me to connect with other women is that I'm a woman. And as a woman, I understand other women. Um, going back to what Lizzie has talked about, what she experienced, 
um, especially in this industry, you know, starting from, you know, from the bottom up and, cre and, and um, you know, building my company, you know, I had to approach men and subcontractors, you know, to pretty much assemble my team. And, you know, I, I came across, you know, a couple subcontractors that straight out said, I won't work with you because you're a woman. You know, so what inspires me to connect with other women in my industry is to empower them. To empower them that, you know what? It doesn't matter if this one doesn't want to work with you. You're going to find a way. And as women, we find a way. Not just in construction, but in life in general. And so it, it's, it's, some, it's really important for me to connect with women because only a woman knows what we go through every single day. And especially being surrounded and being challenged because of we're a woman, because we are women, it, it's like Lizzie said, it fuels your, it fuels, it, it, it's, it's, you know, turning a negative situation into something that's positive. And so it can be very discouraging to only see men out there and to always have to, you know, work with men and, and there's not enough women out there. And so to connect with other women in the industry, it's like, we are the beginning of something great, you know? And so um, when I first started with the company, I had, it, everything was word of mouth. I used Facebook to showcase my work so that people would take me seriously. You know, as a woman, it's like, oh, well, what can you do, you know? And so being able to expand my network, you know, through Facebook and that helped me connect with other women in the industry. You know, my customers are women because we have that trust already established. They understand that I'm coming into their home and they don't have to worry about being harassed or uncomfortable, but you know, I mean, there's different scenarios that can happen, you know? And so connecting with women in general is for me to, to empower others. That is really great. Uh, Martha, do you have anything? I think I, I agree with Maribel. There's a solidarity with women that when there's open conversations, um, that's when you can truly make a change. I remember when I was uh, getting a new job, I there's a, a group of women um, that some have been co-workers in the past and through Women in Architecture, which is also uh, part of the AIA community, I, I've made these friendships and when I was thinking about moving, switching jobs um, and having those nego contract negotiations, like what is my worth? How do I, um, you know, what th those honest, vulnerable conversations of uh, women get paid less because, and they do more. So it, it's demanding what you're worth and uh, making sure that um, you have your group of girlfriends that are in the same industry that are advising you and what their experiences have been, which I've heard a lot of really negative experiences about the value of women's work and salaries in comparison to men with the same experience level. So that's really infuriating. And as a lot of my friends are getting pregnant and, and you know, with young children, this is the time in the timeline of women in, in corporate workplaces when they drop off after seven years because once you have a family, and I admire Lizzie and Maribel so much because they have families and it is so difficult to manage and um, not only the work-life balance, but the support that you get from your company. And, you know, most people, I, I don't think there's even a requirement. I think maybe in two weeks, they won't fire you. Like they'll give you two weeks that they don't fire you. But uh, other than that, there's really not a significant amount of support. And so that's why women don't go back. And that's where you lose the leadership positions, right? Like the ones that make it through the ranks and make that systematic change, as I mentioned before. And so I've had in my first, one of my first jobs, uh, 
we were all women, all of the interns were women or like the architects in training were women. And then slowly, because there wasn't this, you know, support of starting a family and, and having a flexibility, um, you know, they, they started quitting and, and switched jobs that were more to companies that were more supportive. And so I think that is incredibly important for us to, to value women financially value them and, and, and have a salary that is comparable to a man of equal worth and experience, as well as support for women to feel confident that once they have children that they can go back and they're not gonna lose out in, in positions of impact, that it's not gonna, uh, you know, harm them in their professional pursuits and, and uh, to have some flexibility. So it is, it is really important for us to, and I work in a firm that is, it's a global firm. It's a really, really um, large firm. So I feel like we have really great uh, support and infrastructure, but sometimes in the smaller firms, they, they, um, that's not the case. So I, I just, love to to be surrounded by women and encourage women and support each other throughout this um, you know transitions in life that happen and and to continue and stay and stay the course and and stay in the fight like lizzie said and make a difference karen if i if i may add you know i, I don't know if this is directed to that question but i think there's something really important to talk about real brief is about i mean I believe that you can be at all. You can. Mm -hmm. You can be a mom. You can be a, a wife or, you know, or, or girlfriend, boyfriend. You, you can, you know, you, you can have a hobby. You can have a glass of wine or whatever, <laughs> you know, you take to relax. You can <laughs> have it all. And I think it's important that, uh, you know, every, the young generation and even as we get older too, you know, work on, what those priorities look like and you know you know relate yourself in your network and 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 any company that uh, you want to be in that uh, have your same values have your same values whatever you know there's if you want to be a you know you want to have kids you don't want to have kids you wouldn't but um it is important to acknowledge that you can be a mom and you can be an executive and, and, and make sure that, uh, that you put a value to that, you put a value to that and, um, and it's respected. You know, uh, I've been probably blessed to learn in companies where they uh, value that, uh, you know, family first. And, and it is, it is important. But sometimes we don't talk about it, especially women that we don't talk about it because we want to prove ourselves. Right? We want to come here and prove and, and do this and do that. And, and we don't want to talk about it because we don't know how it's going to be perceived. So we need to make sure that um, we can tell, you know, younger generations and, and even to ourselves right now that, that it's okay to be in the media and have your kids in the background. You know, mm -hmm. it's okay to take your kids to the doctor and say no to a media. And mm -hmm. it's okay. And, and if your, your counterparts don't agree with that, then maybe that's not the place that you need to be. So I think, I think is we need to give, make sure we're giving our place as a mom, giving yeah. your place. I would so. like to add to that as well. Cause I, it's, you know, being a mom is like the best, like at the end of the day, I tell everybody at the end of the day, what matters to me is that I'm a mom, you know, and starting a new business, being in construction, being a Latina, being a minority in this field, it weighs, there's so much that, that pulls you as, as a mother, you know, and I want to be home to do the homework and to cook the dinner and to tuck him in bed. And, and so what inspires me to reach out to other women is that you can, like Lizzie said, have it all. And as women, we're very creative and we figure it out, you know, as tired as we may be sometimes at the end of the day, we still figure out how 
to make it all work. And I think that's what makes us special. That's, I think, what makes us stand out versus the guys is that we, one, don't take no for an answer. And our kids, our family are our priority. Not to say that for the guys it's not, but as women, we move mountains and, you know, for our kids. And so it's, I'm excited. I feel the responsibility being in this industry, being a general contractor, to say, you know what, I just led a team full of subcontractors. We're working on a project, but you know what? I'm here now. I'm home with my son. We're having dinner. And then I, mama starts it all over again the next day. And so for, like Lizzie said, for the younger generation is, it's possible. You know, it's encouraging to say they are doing it. We're paving the way. And it really does start with us. I think those are all great points. I think we're, we need to, um, to remember that to, to elevate women who may be out on maternity leave that aren't, you know, at the table talking to them, you know, making sure that, you know, they're not being set aside for, for maybe a promotion because they're not there. Um, so I think, I think those are all great, um, being advocates. Um, I, I am a mom too. So I've, I've, uh, I've experienced some of those things and, hopefully uh, can get past them. So on, uh, on that, what can communities do to support those efforts? Are you in? You, in? you have something? Okay. For communities, okay. So like I said before, you know, I, I didn't know about the Luna Awards until I was asked to be a panelist. And, you know, I feel like, you know, more exposure, not just of what the guys are doing, but of what we're doing, you know, of showcasing our work. I mean, just reading everybody's bios, like I was so impressed. I was like, wow, you know, I'm like, these ladies are awesome. You know, where have they been all my life? Um, <laughs> but it, it, it's, you know, for, for communities, um, I mean, on my end, I know, you know, part of starting, um, you know, my company is eventually, you know, in a year or so, I want to be able to mentor other ladies, you know, other young women in high school that want to start construction work, but they don't know where to, where to go. So I think it's like Lizzie has said many times and all the other ladies as well is start to have those conversations, you know, and I think it starts with the schools, you know, having those conversations that it's not construction is not just for the men you know there are women out there so i think having that exposure definitely within the communities of the leadership that you know us as women have that again if it were not for the luna awards i would have never been exposed to such amazing women and you know i'm you know I started, you know, it's been about two and a half years and wow, like, I don't know what different, I mean, it would have made, I think a lot more difference if I would have known a long time ago about y'all because I really, when I started off, felt like I was on this, on my own, you know? And so now that I know that y'all exist, I'm like, well, let's do this. <laughs> well, I have, uh, I, I will have to agree with Maribel. Um, and I have two, probably two spe very specific things in the community right now. And I'm talking more, you know, not only the community in, in greater Austin, but I would say Texas, Dallas, Corpus, San Antonio. Uh, start with the chambers. Greater mm -hmm. Austin Chamber of Commerce, you know, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, LGBT Chamber of Commerce. You know, there's a lot of events and, you know, have, have women speak. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I go, I mean, I'll have the conversation with, um, uh, with, uh, with Diana, but have the leadership in your events be balanced out where you 60, 40 and not 40, 60. We need that exposure. We need that. So it needs to start with this great chambers that are advocate for for the city for for you know for for the community for the for the county for so you know i i i've seen i've seen some shift on that 
but not what we need. So I think, I think that support needs to be there, especially, especially in an industry. And it's mm -hmm. highlight all of us, engineers, architects, geotech, and especially geotech people on the field that specialize, you know, in, in, in all of it, you know, it, it, have that, have us, have us a 60, 40, and I will fight for that. You know, um, comes in the, the school districts, the same thing, you know, just like Maribel said, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe Luna, maybe the chambers, we can do, you know, uh, a day in a women's life, you know, and, 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 and we can advocate for that. And, and tell the kids, you know, I see my daughter and my daughter goes to ASD and she goes to school and, you know, it, it's, it's all books there, mail stuff. And I'm like, I have to teach my kids about what I do. And they go like, mm, mm, you know, like they don't, you know, they don't see it. Yeah. So um, start, start with the kids first and then, but, but get, get us into, you know, get, get, you know, get, you know, you know, Austin is very good at having probably the majority of council women, you know, council members being women, but you know, give us that exposure, you know, to 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 the uh, professional community, to talk about this, to highlight us in in, in those events. Um, so yeah, that will be my ask to the community: do a sixty forty. I call it sixty forty. <laughs> so, what advice would you give? other women who are in a male dominated field such as ours and need to expand their network. Martha? I would tell them to be resourceful to, as Lizzie and Maribel had talked about, um, take a hands-on approach. Things are not gonna be handed to you. And especially right now as we're paving the, we're paving the way for us to, to truly have a significant influence. So you have to contribute in meaningful ways and you have to get involved. It's not enough. Unfortunately, you do like women and Hispanic women, you have that added responsibility to set, set the pace and, and, and be a pioneer uh, because of this lack of representation. And so you do have to reach out, you have to participate, you have to be seen and you have to be heard and you have to take up space. Um, I, I've heard this, I participated in the Latino leadership um, collective and, and this is how I met Veronica who put me in touch with the Luna Awards and, and they always encouraged us to take up space, to sit at the table, it's not enough, you have to, to have a presence and you have to contribute because your perspective and it doesn't matter how much experience you have or how your background is different, you have to contribute in a meaningful way. So I would say that we need, uh, we need to find uh, ways that we can insert ourselves into the community. As I mentioned before, because I went through this very selfish process of studying for many years and, and, and studying for my exams, I wanted, I felt, I felt that I needed to have that title in order to be taken seriously, because if I wasn't licensed, then I wasn't gonna be treated with the same respect, which is a very specific woman thing. Like a man would not feel that he needs that title, right? But I felt like I needed it. And after that, I just, I, I, I'm part of city boards, I'm in design commission, I'm on board of adjustment. I do, I, I was the ACE mentorship, scholarship chair and you just you just have to take the time um, and and be part of your community and and make a difference through your actions and through encouraging people to participate and, and it's everyone has incredibly busy lives and it, it's a lot of work I'm not going to say it's not but that's that's the way we're going to make a change and um, you know then people people begin to, to see others that look like themselves and see themselves in, in, in that way. So like Lizzie mentioned, we need um, women who are speakers, women who, who are representing um, this industry in a very male dominated world. So you just awesome. have to put in that extra. I, I would, so I love this question. Um, 
advice to other women in this industry, being a general contractor, when I first started, when I first went into a store to be considered a contractor, to be a part of their program, I was seen as just a customer. I was told customer service is that way, ma'am. And I had to make my presence known. So that is the first advice, piece of advice that I would say to, to women is make your presence known. Do not be intimidated because you get confused for the cleaning lady or because you're, you're thought of as just a customer, not an actual contractor, is make your presence known. You know, as women, we are strong. We go through so many different things in life and making your presence known, knowing that this is where you decided to be and this is where you're going to be. Um, also, as well as continue, you know, have that professionalism, you know, as women, we face a lot of, as I know Lizzie said, is, you know, we, hey, you know, we sometimes conversations are, are sent the other direction when we're trying to just focus on work. So definitely making sure you're always professional and you're not just seen as a woman, but as someone who, you know, is a professional, professional career-minded woman, having the tough skin. You know, this being in construction is not a walk in the park. And as women already in the industry is we know that. So being able to give that advice to another woman, it, it prepares them to know that you have to have tough skin. You cannot take things personally. And at the end of the day, it's about getting the job done and going home to your family. And be proud of being a, being a woman in this industry. It's very, um, you know, we are paving the way. And to be able to say, you know what, we are in this industry. We're here to stay. We're here to make a name for ourselves. That is going to take us many, many miles to be able to reach the younger generation, to empower them to actually take that step forward to... Give this, give this industry a shot to actually start something new. And it breaks that cycle of that mentality of construction is just for men. If I may, um, I think one of the, one of the many advice I would give them is, you know, I, I spoke to this before. Don't ask permission to leave. In, 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 in any level you're at, don't ask permission to leave. You know, something needs to be done, you do it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, that's something that, that's just going to excel you. Um, be, I would say, be proud of who you are. Be proud of who you are. Be proud to speak two languages. You speak two languages. A lot of people don't. Be proud to have an accent. I have a, have a huge accent. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of time, I was a little bit, you know, nervous about that. And uh, had a lot of male counterparts that wanted to bring me down. And I, one day I said, well, I have an accent, but I speak two languages. How many do you speak? Mm -hmm. So, you know, is, is be confident, believe in yourself, be proud of who you are, be proud of who you are and be humble to know what you don't know. Be humble to know that there's always gonna be somebody male or female, that's going to be better than you. Always. Everyone is replaceable. And, you know, and always, you know, have that thirst for, for knowledge, to know. You know, and just like, like Martha said, it, it's okay not to know. It's okay to ask, ask the questions. Ask the good questions, the not, the not so good questions. Ask the questions and, and because that's going to make you grow or that's going to put you in front of your next opportunity. And you don't know that. So just, but you have to be very humble to know that you're not it. You know, there's, there's, for me, there's not, I've never feel like I reach a ceiling because I feel that there's so much to know. And there's so many other people that are so much better than I am. So I, I, I never want, if one day I wake up and, and, and feel like this, this is it. Uh, then, I mean, that's for me, it's not humble, one. And two, it's like, 
then, then what am, why am I doing this then? This is, this is it, right? You always need to look for ways to reinvent yourself, to know more about our industry, about what we do, how we do it. Is it that you're working for a company, creating your own business, but always have that thirst of wanting to, to know. And, and, and I think just keeping that balance and maintaining that sense of being humble will take you places money, titles. If you work hard for it, for what you want, they'll come. I mean, trust, trust me, they'll, everything will come. But at the end of the day, it's like, what a, you know, you want it to feel that you are fulfilled as a human being. So, and whatever that means to, to you. So that will be my, my advice. I think uh, to add to Lizzie, I think it's, it is critical to, to be humble and ask questions. I feel like I've learned the most from my collaborators, like not necessarily an architect who's a mentor, but from being open and honest. And uh, like I had in a past project, I had a mechanical engineer that was incredible uh, to work with. And I asked him, so I learned so much about mechanical engineering from being open to ask questions. I learned from my contractors. I learned just ask questions and, you, and, and, and be resourceful with all of the people that you're lucky to be surrounded by. Because in this industry, you're surrounded by specialists. All your consultants, the contractors, they, they're your resource for, for knowledge. As an architect, I'm not gonna know, I don't know, even though I draw all the details, that might not be the best way to, to find a solution for something and the contractor might have a better um, idea or opinion or in a way that we can together make something um, aesthetically pleasing but also really functional. So um, sometimes, so they, they say that that men, like the biggest thing that, I'm not, I'm not trying to bash men, but, um, the biggest fear for a woman is physical harm because we're smaller historically or uh, physically we're smaller than men. So our biggest fear is physical harm. Uh, but for a man, their biggest fear is ego, like a bruise to their ego. So maybe women in the industry and women being more open to listening, to communication, to asking questions, to being open to learn from each other, all those things can only be good and, and better for the whole industry. So I, I encourage that, that that's a, a really great tool that uh, you use your, your colleagues for, for expanding your knowledge. Those are all great things. And I think it kind of kind of goes into our next uh, question. Can you share some experiences you've had with mentoring um, did you have a mentor or have you been a mentor to women in your industry? Yes, I, I, I've had both I have great mentors and I've been a mentor to women in, in the state of Texas. Um, and it's, it's been great. It's, it's been great to be able to, to give back a little bit of, 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 of my experience and, and how to, deal with personalities and situations. Um, instead of Texas, we had a program, mentoring program uh, for prayer managers. Um, and I was leading that effort and I was able to, uh, to listen to her stories, uh, to my colleague's story, to her stories and, and how to deal with, with uncomfortable situations and, and, and kind of help them to navigate through that. And, uh, you know, sometimes I learn more from them than they learn from me um, be because of that, you know, I guess my, my, my own humbleness that I, I feel like I always want to absorb those things from people. Um, and on, on the mentoring side, I've had, I have great women mentor that, you know, that have helped me build my character and to have that tough skin and uh not i think i think one thing that that i would say we have to work on in this industry ourselves as women is that we dwell on stuff we dwell you know i don't want to say we're not soft that's not being soft 
It's just we dwell on stuff. So, you know, things are going to happen. You're not going to like, you know, I believe, I don't know, with Martha or Maribel is, is, you know, sometimes don't take things personally. We do. Because maybe because we're women, that's, you know. Uh, so when we talk about we have a top skin and, and built in that character, unfortunately, yes, we have to do it quicker and, and more than the men does. You know, they don't have to prove themselves. We, I'm sorry, we have to. You know, it, it is, it, actually it is what it is right now. So you have an option. You either uh, dwell about it or, or just shake it off and build on the, in your character, build on it. And, and you know, people again are gonna tell you, uh, well, you know, you're, you're, you're too rough. You, you're being a, no, it's me being assertive. You wouldn't say that to a guy. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna get those things. So acknowledge that you're gonna get all of that. You're gonna get it, you're gonna get it all. So I think I have great mentors that will help build on my character and my confidence. Because as you start, you know, uh, moving up the ladder, you're gonna have you're gonna have a lot of that. So you need to stay strong-minded and focus on on your qualifications and your ability to lead. So everything else in the back burner. So being very blessed to have uh, uh, mentors behind the build of my character. So I'm I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah, I. I think uh, we as women tend to overanalyze things. Now, maybe not dwell, but overanalyze on, on when a man says something, they don't even think about it. Um, our male colleagues, they just say something. And, and I always like, like analyze, like, what did he mean by that? You know, so I think that's, that, I think I get, you know, get what you're talking about there. And they didn't give it a second thought when they said it. And you're like, well, that actually means this to me. And and, you know, I think it's hard to sometimes voice those, um, you know, things in your head that are going on. You're like, okay, well, I think you meant this, but you said it, the way you said it was, was something else. So I think those are, those are interesting points. Um, Martha, did you have anything to add? I, um, like I mentioned earlier, I have been part of the ACE mentorship program for, I think, four years, five years now so that's been an incredible opportunity i started as a mentor and then moved into the board but i think it's it, it restores your uh, you know sometimes we when we've been working for a while and and experience disappointments or stress it's very stressful i think you start to become cynical a little bit about situations and 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 i think this just restores your purpose right it seen uh, these students or these young people explore the possibilities and and uh, because I was part of because I was the scholarship chair I at the end of the year once they're done with their 15 sessions they can win a scholarship and and they part of the application is they have to submit an essay where they talk about it has different topics but but um essentially they talk about what they've learned and how they can apply it and all of them it's just the the goodness in their heart of truly wanting to make the world a better place and um their passion for sustainability their passion for collaboration and exploration into new materials or new systems and and so many women participate in that program i think it's women are the the majority actually of students I, I think it's like a 60 40 like we were talking about so it just restores my faith in the industry in the future in everything that you work so hard for so that it's a little bit easier for someone else and I've been lucky enough to write letters of recommendation for women going into architecture programs at incredible schools and so I'm always so flattered and so happy to write those and, and to see them on their journey as, as they go into, into college and beyond. And um, so that, that's incredibly satisfying. As far as a mentor myself, I, I mentioned earlier too, that unfortunately I don't have a women mentor. I do have wonderful male mentors and part of uh, what I love about Gensler is it, there, there's so many different 
layers and levels of expertise and everyone is so so wonderful in 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 giving you their time i think i think time is our our most important commodity and every time that i reach out to them they will sit with me and walk through an issue or or um work through a situation that i'm dealing with and so that is one of the best parts at working in the company that i work at because we there is a lot of us at every different level of experience and and um i'm I'm so lucky and, and I appreciate that. I, I hope that one day, like those men, those technical mentors that I have that are men, I hope to one day become them in and be able to help women. Um, and I am starting to, to mentor others within my company. Um, and I, I just wish to to continue doing that, continue gaining experience and, and technical acumen so that I can help more and more people. But it is it is um, a source of of extreme satisfaction to to be able to mentor the high school kids, but also in the future be a bigger mentor at my uh, at my work. Thank and you to so anyone else who wants to reach out to me, I, I would love it. Awesome. So um, I think um, we've all had some great experiences with mentors. Um, I recently started a camp for girls uh, ages six through ninth grade to teach them hands-on skills for construction and talk to the project management side. And we've had engineers come in and, and talk to them and it's just been so fulfilling. I think that's, you know, the the step that we've been missing is is the outreach to the younger girls. Um, I, high school is is almost too late. I think yeah. you know that's why we decided to to start with like fifth going into sixth and go through high school. Um, and it it's just so important. And, and just meeting some of the girls last year and some of the thank you notes I got it was so encouraging to keep doing it. So. Yeah. Um, and uh, compliments to you all for, for everything that you've done. I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. I wanted to thank the panel, our um, guest speakers that we had. Um, everyone um, had such great uh, input for all the women in our industry. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'm sure there'll be some links to um, our contact information. I'd be happy to, to speak with anyone that's interested in you know, joining the industry, switching professions. Um, and we just wanted to thank everyone again. Um, so thanks everyone. We appreciate you joining us today. Hello and greetings from Austin, Texas, the great capital of Texas. My name is Diana Maldonado and I'm the president and CEO of the Greater Austin Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. It is indeed my honor and pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 Luna Awards hosted by the Regional Hispanic Contractors Association, which is the largest Hispanic association in the U.S. Our, our HCA's mission is to promote and support the advancement and economic growth of the Hispanic contractors, architects, and engineers in Texas and nationally as well. It is indeed an honor to recognize uh, the nominees and look forward to congratulating the honorees of these prestigious awards that y'all have been making a difference in construction, architecture, and engineering. And that make, and because of your work, Austin continues to thrive and be diverse in the construction uh, industry, which is very, very much welcomed. And it is also very refreshing to see Latinas very strong in this industry. And so again, we, we are lock and step in partnership with each and every one of you and with the Aluna Awards and RHCA and, and wish you continued success in the work that you're doing in the cities and nationally throughout uh, the US. So again, congratulations. And I look forward to working with you in 2021 and beyond. Hi everybody, I'm Kamisha Mason and I'm excited today to get everyone excited about another year of Luna. This year we are recognizing two key categories, the Outstanding Business Advocate of the Year and the Established Service Firm of the Year. 
With me, I also have Maricela, and I'd like for you to introduce yourself as well. Hi, everybody. My name is Maricela Gonzalez. I am representative of the board Hispanic Contractors Association. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Marisela González y yo represento a la mesa directiva de los contratistas hispanos de la construcción. Nominations for the Outstanding Business Advocate and the Established Firm of the Year are open now until November 30th. So nominate all of the amazing women and advocate in our markets today. Now there's one big difference between these two categories. The established firm must be owned by a woman and that that person must own at least 51% of the business. The Business Advocate Award is open to everybody, so please again nominate. Um, we look forward to recognizing all of our nominees and our winners on December 17th at our annual Lunar Awards. Please join me in thanking our Luna Ambassadors for hosting today. Luna Speaker Tour. This event could not happen without your support and leadership. Thank you everybody for the support.